There is a psychological phenomenon called mere exposure effect. It means that as we see something over and over again, it becomes more familiar and we develop more preference for it. Dr. Ian Tyndall and Catherine Newell at the Chichester University in the UK tested this concept in relation to breastfeeding in public. They use simple images uh, of a mother breastfeeding in a cafe surrounded by other people, and their study showed that looking at as few as four images like this already increased positive attitudes towards it. If such a small action already has a positive effect, just imagine what a poster campaign can do. Please make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, Share the podcast if you like it. And now, enjoy the talk. So I am here today with Dr. Ian Tyndall and Catherine Newell. Thank you for joining me. Morning, Eva. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Um, we're going to be talking about the study that you have conducted a few years ago. And um, one of the most important outcome from the study is that looking at images of mothers breastfeeding who are surrounded by other people would increase people's acceptance towards breastfeeding in public. Could you please explain in layman's terms how much increase you have noted in people's positive attitudes and what that really means? Okay, so um, we wanted to see if, um, if the mere exposure effect would could be used in the context of improving societal support for mothers breastfeeding in public um, and so for those people that don't know the mere exposure effect is a, a psychological phenomenon where people tend to develop a preference for things because they're familiar with them so a brief exposure then would gradually as the brief exposure gradually increases so too does their familiarity and liking for that particular stimulus um, and we needed to find a way of being able to to measure that really and there wasn't currently at the time any, any appropriate scale so we went away and we we carefully developed something um that would be suitable to use that had it had to be easy to use you know fairly quick and repeatable um and so we developed the attitudes to breastfeeding in public scale which was measured on a scale of um one to five where one is strongly disagree and five is strongly agree so the higher the higher the number you know the the greater the liking for that particular um, image and we wanted to measure whether the mere being exposed to images across two different time points might be might inc might have an impact on the mere exposure effect and increase their liking for for these particular images in terms of you know the context of seeing mothers breastfeed in public um, and what we found is that we we took the measurement at time one and then seven just the survey and then seven days later we repeated the survey after see after they were um got to see four a set of four images um and we found that there was you know an increase of liking for for those particular images between the, the difference of the two surveys so the i think we took the um the average mean score between time one and time two and the difference between the two was then was then the increase mm -hmm. and I suppose one of the key elements here is that that mother who was on the picture was surrounded by other people so she wasn't just on her own yeah so there were there were four different p images so there was one image where you know she was on her on her own there was another image that where she had women in the background another image where she had men in the background and then a fourth image where there were a mix of men and women in the background and how much increase uh, did you note in the positive attitude um, it was just slightly significant so just like we had almost 400 in, in the sample although 380 of the 400 were female so it was very highly skewed towards females but that's the nature of where we uh, promoted the, the study and the kinds of people that were interested in in, in in the topic. So we were pleased that some men still still were willing to take part. It was a much lower percentage. So when we conducted a paired samples t test, which you probably no probably wouldn't normally do on such a large sample like that, almost four hundred. So it was just about as significant. So if we're talking about an effect size, where what's the real meaningful impact of that for society? And we would say that we we did find a a, a, a small. Um, effect, but we'd need to kind of run it again and repeat it with various different stimuli and different conditions. So, but we were pleased to see an, an effect for such a short in, 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 in intervention. So it wasn't, we didn't repeat it lots of times, it's just two, two time points. 
and um, we, and we, we we debated. It's a really good question you asked earlier. With, with mothers breastfeeding on their own versus others, we debated whether to include uh, images of mothers breastfeeding on, on their own. But we but the whole idea of what was the breastfeeding in public and just uh, having other people being in the environment around them, potentially them staring at them. And we did find some interesting effects that we weren't expecting of the different combinations of it, uh, whether it was just females only in the background, males only in the background, or a combination of males and females in the, in the background. But um, it was just to see what that, anything simple that could be rolled out in a very simple way, but whether you could see it on billboards in, in, in towns, whether you could see it in cafes uh, and, and on a rubber restaurants or bus stations and train stations and places like that, because it's a simple kind of thing. Could you just, as Catherine was saying, the mirror's project, could we put these kinds mm. of images around I'm so, so pleased for to, to have found that with such a small in, 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 in intervention. I think it gives us the basis for developing something more comprehensive going forward. And we know of other other teams. There's one team in particular in, the, in Texas to have followed up our, our study and done different kind of versions of it as well. And now they're looking to publish that. So I think it's it is inspiring others to do re research and they could come up with a different set of images or some maybe movies, something that's a, kind of like on a TikTok type type to machine short short films but for for for, for still images that we um, produced i was we, we did find um, a, a small positive effect over time and liking pretty images mm -hmm. i think that's fantastic as well that a relatively small intervention already have a measurable outcome yeah so you can imagine if it's kind of increased on a bigger scale then it can have a real impact yeah um interestingly uh, there was no real difference in the attitudes between male and female participants. Uh, I would have expected higher acceptance from women. Did you think about what could be the reason for this? It was really interesting. I mean, our, from our study, I mean, because there, there were so few men that participated, it was really difficult to make any specific comparisons um, hmm. between, you know, between men and women. Um, and I think it's it's equally as important actually men are equally as invested in caring and raising of children so I think it was it's an interesting one um and there are many other factors that come into play such as you know the thoughts and feelings of women that are you know that they might experience in being able to support other mothers as you know as their their children grow you know these all have an impact on then how they're able to support others later on um I don't think we didn't really investigate kind of the, the, the main differences between between men and women. If we had 380 females and about 16, then men, you couldn't realistically do any meaningful kind of comparisons really, really there. Mm -hmm. um, we were like, we debated whether to exclude that the male participants, we felt it was important to have their voice in it overall. We couldn't really compare with phase 15 versus 380, but um, there were some differences just uh, in terms of, kind of informal feedback and when, when we we're de debriefing participants a a afterwards or and um, participants did participate from around the world so it wasn't just in, in the UK and, and Ireland and the western it's in Europe and um, so it, it does it does seem to raise some emotive issues like so there was one uh, one, one, one particular lady who said that it was um, biased towards breastfeeding per, 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 per se and what about mothers who can't and um, mothers who want to but are not able to, 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 to breastfeed or that we were anti-bottle feeding and so no that, that wasn't a message at all that we were trying to get across with this it's just for those women who want to 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 to, to breastfeed but feel maybe uncomfortable doing it in public environments is there anything that we could do to 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 support that it's surprising that all women want to uh, su to support that like uh, some women um, saying that they that they don't breastfeed and had no interest in it, so they um, they don't feel the need maybe to support women who want to do it because they're used to bottle feeding. So we aren't saying uh, one one way is better. We're just interested in those who want to do the breastfeed and trying more ways to to support and hopefully come up with societal changes. I do think they're getting getting better, but there's still some disapproval. The fact that you don't get universal likings for these photographs suggests that there is still some people who don't feel that comfortable with with a woman breastfeeding in, in a cafe or a, or a restaurant or something that where it's, it should be very natural. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. And I think that's another aspect I really liked about your study that you kind of used these descriptive words and see how they land with the participants um, because that would exactly kind of give a, an overview of how they feel about it, how, how they can put into words how they feel about it. So um, you use words like practical, embarrassing, neutral, beautiful. So a selection of positive and negative adjectives uh, that they mark 
how much they agree or disagree with. And I was curious, out of all of the words, which one received the highest association with breastfeeding in public? That's interesting one. We didn't, I mean, this is a scale that we we borrowed from another study um, that was already developed in a 2010 study by um, Fairbrother and Stranger Ross. And so we didn't specifically, they, they'd gone into a bit more detail about looking at the specifics of the individual objectives. That's not, that wasn't the purpose of our study within, within this context. We just wanted to get an overview of, you know, between all of the images, which ones were uh, most favourable or least favourable. Um, but I think that would be an interesting one to kind of explore perhaps you know within a later study certainly okay okay Ian as you mentioned as well this whole topic is very emotive it's really hard to touch it anyway without getting some backlash from someone and especially I think it's because of the association of breast with sex is still one of the key reasons why breastfeeding in public is still very controversial and yeah. One of the words, actually, from the descriptive words were sexy. And at first, when I saw it, it really shocked me on the list. But then I understood how, why this is really necessary to measure the reaction to that. And I was definitely most curious, what was the outcome for this particular word? But then I'm not sure you actually measure word by word. No, we, we did look into that, but it's a really, really good question. But something... Yeah, as as Kat said, we just bar- we just took it from the Fairbanger and Sanger Ross um, in the scale, but we just were interested whether they would be related to specific the images uh, as well, whether when they're writing that would they really relate. But well, I think it's an important one to to look at in in much more detail. You asked a really good question. I think that's a really good research question to follow up, up on, and whether to associate like the breast with 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 sex rather than something like uh, feeding and uh, and survival. And something natural, so people that cannot separate or or, or distinguish um, um, a breast from just the only sexual connotations, rather than the nurturing and um, connotations. Yeah, uh, it, its primary function. Um, based on the study, uh, did you get closer how to resolve this issue of people still not being comfortable uh, seeing breastfeeding in public? I think this idea of familiarity and um, using images as much as you can is a good way to do it. Yeah, sorry, that, that's a really great question. And it's one that I've often wondered myself um, on many occasions. You know, um, I think one thing's for sure is that it's really complex. It, there's no easy quick fix. Um, you know, it's taken as many generations to get to where we are now in terms of, you know, the perceived um negative or positive outcomes of you know breastfeeding seeing a mother breastfeeding in public um I mean the purpose of our study was to see whether the mere exposure effect had any implications for potential um you know public health messages or health campaigns um and it's certainly certainly one that we could um incorporate easily as Ian mentioned earlier into you know just having it on billboard campaigns or you know advertising or even you know in soap operas and things you know just having you know in a cafe somewhere just seeing a family um in the background and you know increasing the levels of social norms around that could associating adjectives or positive messages with the images actually increase the positive attitude towards breastfeeding as opposed to just seeing the images so i wondered without the descriptive words of positive words uh, would have you got the same results I think I think if that was the case, we would have found fairly universal uh, effects for the fact that we found our uh, participants they preferred image one to Im- image four, and there's a significant difference suggests that it didn't impact each image in in in, in the same way. So therefore, we couldn't really conclude that uh, exposing the participants to these adjectives uh, were, were words um, and which they mm-hmm. liked um, or disliked or positive or negative, you know, in- influenced them all the same way. So the fact that they didn't. They, they didn't like all of the images at the same to the same level, and there were some significant differences in their liking for the specific images of, of breastfeeding in public, despite all being exposed to those words. Suggests that it, it probably didn't have a big big impact mm-hmm. overall. Um, one of the unexpected findings of the study was that there is a more positive acceptance associated with the image where men are in the background compared to the image where women are in the background. And you noted in the study that proximity of the people on the pictures might have played a role in the difference. But could you tell us a little bit more about this? 
Well, the, the when we took the images, actually, the the mother, obviously, the mother was, um, you know, one that we see, sought permission <laughs> to take the image, the pictures of her and her infant feeding. Um, but the customers were in the cafe were were genuine customers. So it's, you know, you you're kind of taking the images as and when you know you notice. Uh, you know, or oh, there's some men in that direction. Let's take a photo in that direction. So there were some um, slightly, yeah, some slight differences in that respect. So yeah, no, it's just back to what Catherine is, is saying there. So we wanted to make it as natural uh, as possible. But when you do that, obviously you lose some element of experimental control, and that there will be some slight differences in distance from from the mother breastfeeding to um, to the customers, depending on which angle they're at, depending which seats that they had taken in in it. The um, people that were in the background were not taking part in in the study. It's kind of surprising that the women, um, because it's mostly female in in our sample, uh, have a more positive um, ratings towards the men in the background. Maybe it's just the surprise of that. Maybe that's what they felt. That, well, it's 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 the pleas that the mother is willing to that in the presence of men, and maybe that's whereas they probably it's probably not as as big an issue for the, for a mother to be breastfeeding in front of other women, and maybe in the background, but. We can't probably say that for certain because the the, the images of the women m- might have been slightly further away. But I think it could be just more that that they were pleased to see a woman breastfeeding with with, with men in 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 the immediate environment around them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's definitely a very interesting aspect to further explore. Uh, the reason I find your study very important is because the burden of desensitizing the public to the idea that with breastfeeding you will see a breast it completely falls on the breastfeeding mothers at the, at the moment, even though I'm pretty sure a majority of them wouldn't wish that role on themselves. They just would like to breastfeed their baby. So, and if breastfeeding campaigns can take over that role uh, from the actual moms who breastfeed, but instead it's posters and images uh, located in different places, that we will make a significant difference. Um, did you consider any other actions or any other thoughts that you would like to share? I think from my perspective, I always found this topic really fascinating. And um, it's to use an analogy or a metaphor, you wouldn't go and climb Mount Everest without having done some training, <laughs> without having you know got all the support around you that you need to climb the Mount Everest. Um, so why are we expecting mothers that as soon as they've had a baby to just be able to breastfeed and and then blaming them potentially for when it might not go quite as well as planned? But, you know, we all play a role in how we support our mothers. That element of support for me is, has been um, really quite an important one. So for me, it was about looking at societal attitudes, looking at social norms and thinking, how, OK, so what is it? Let's how can we unpack that and see what are the what are the components there that we could do fairly easily and cost effectively to be able to increase the social norms towards, you know, more favourable outcomes for mothers who wish to breastfeed. Yeah, just to back with um, going in there, what Catherine is saying, I, I fully agree with that. And um, just from my own experiences, we've had. Uh, I have two children. One was uh, breastfed, and one was was, bo- was bottle fed. So I've seen the differences, kind of up, up, up close, in how women are treated in in in, in, in public. And um, but as I think Catherine's right, it's a society thinks women should just get on with it because that's a woman's thing. Social norms can change. We we can always say, well, that's just the way things are. But if you look at, for example, with smoking in particular, and um, just the, how little you see it in in a lot of public places now, and uh, the smoking rates are reduced. It's not that it's gone gone down to zero by, by any means and lots of people still kind of choose that and that's that's fine but you don't really see it in in public places so for anyone that says oh well we can't really shift social norms all you have to look is a smoking example so we want to make the society uh, better for women and just to support that because it's tougher for, for women to in in lots of, of these situations where because a lot of decisions in societal, um, societies are made by male dominate panels committees and governments and, and so on. So I think we can change, as Catherine was saying, we can make things better uh, for women, make, make things easier for those who want to do this. And as we said, we didn't come and saying that breastfeeding is the only way and it's better than, than, than other than bottle feeding. We're saying just for those who would like to do it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I think that's the, the fact that it's still kind of considered just a woman's thing as opposed to a public health issue, a social thing is, is a big factor. And there, there can be lots of small ways to help it. 
one of them being this, let's change the perception. Yeah, and I'll just talk about this up, but the fact that we couldn't find, I apologize for coming in there, but we, the fact that Catherine mentioned earlier as well, we, we, we couldn't find a measure out there that exactly suited what we wanted to do. So we, we, we did use um, a scale, like it was called the Iowa Infant um, Feeding Attitude Scale, but there were some questions that were relevant to what we wanted to ask, mm. but there were others that were not. So the fact that we had to develop our own scale, the attitudes to breastfeeding scale ourselves shows that there hasn't been that much research on the issue. The fact that we couldn't even find a standardized scale that everybody uses in, 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 in this area. Mm -hmm. That speaks volumes in itself. (laughs) Thank you so much for both of you for your time. That was very interesting to learn about this study. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. There still exists a considerable amount of disapproval for breastfeeding in public. And this is a problem for two reasons. First, it discourages mothers from breastfeeding because who wants to sit in the crossfire of disapproval all the time? And second, those who breastfeed in public also carry the burden of being that necessary visual input that society needs to reach that point of familiarity, to reach that point of acceptance. There is something we can do here. We can use posters to redirect that negative attention from the moms onto the posters. Let the posters absorb these moments of disapproval and be the visual input that society needs to reach that point of acceptance. So this is a call for action for local governments, public health organizations, start a poster campaign. Use an image of a mother who is breastfeeding, not by herself, but in a public space surrounded by other people who treat it as normal. These posters serve more than one purpose. They help people to get enough visual input under their belt to reach that point of familiarity. And it also reassures mothers that breastfeeding in public is not just a right that you have to chase for yourself, but it sends a message that there is an official support behind it. I know that there are phenomenal memes making the rounds on social media about breastfeeding in public, but These generally tend to stay within the breastfeeding community while posters reach people who otherwise wouldn't come across these images. And placing them in public areas like train stations, libraries, parks, it also makes it clear that this is the exact place where you might come across breastfeeding happening. If you know anyone working in one of these organizations, please bring this to their attention and hopefully we will see some campaigns popping up in the near future. If you see some good examples or have an idea for a poster campaign, please email us. We would love to hear from you. Next Monday, my guest will be Dr. Katie Foss again. This time, we will be looking at the many layers of formula marketing, starting from the clear and formal messages on the surface down to the deeper psychological effects that are taking place under the surface. I hope to see you next Monday.